Okay, so here we are on the part two of the Apex rolling block carbine carbine project. So, in the last video we left off after getting it all disassembled and getting it all pretty much pulled apart. So, the receiver has been through the ultrasonic cleaner and it actually turned out okay. It doesn't look super terrible now. I mean, it still looks bad, but it doesn't look super terrible. So, there's that. This screw still has to come out. I haven't gotten to that part yet. These uh, through holes that hold the trigger guard into place, these are going to get drilled out and retapped to a larger size. Same with the keeper key screw, that one's also going to get drilled out and threaded out to a larger size. Luckily, this steel is pretty soft, uh, so it's not going to be a major pain in the ass to do that. But uh, overall, it turned out okay. Right? So, moving on to the trigger guard. Um, and the last video is completely seized up, covered in gunk, right? We've gotten it stripped apart, cleaned apart pretty well. Uh, you can still see there's still some gunk down in there. Nothing too terrible. Now, uh, the block locking lever was frozen into place, so that's been freed up now. The spring was actually also frozen into place down inside there and all that gunk. Uh, so this screw hole for the, uh, for the locking lever or the block locking lever spring has been rethreaded, and same with the trigger spring that one had to get with re get rethreaded too so there's that uh, oh also on the receiver the uh, reinforcing pin uh, after cleaning it up turns out it was split and I assume that happened when they went to uh, re chamber or drill out this this old barrel when I put it in a vise or something, so this this pin was completely split and sitting in the uh, receiver, kind of sort of like that. So, gonna need a new one of those. We'll make a new one of those. Mainspring came out, so this is the mainspring that was in the trigger guard, and you can see there's that little tab up there at the front that's been ground down. Right? Again, I don't know why they did that, but here's the replacement springs, and you can see. A tab is there. So this is what's going to keep pressure on the actual hammer, keep the hammer down, right? Or keep it at a half cock. That was another thing that this had trouble doing before. Uh, trigger's been pulled out, all that sort of thing. Trigger spring's been pulled out. Here's that. Let's see, it's pretty corroded. It's pretty worse for wear, but that's okay. It's also got that layer of gunk and corrosion on there, but no big deal. We've got replacements and luckily the trigger and the block locking lever springs are the exact same so that's good news there so there's that uh, moving on to the barrel so here's some information I come up with so this is just kinda like a rough overview of what's going on with this barrel right so here is the original barrel right here and here is the quote-unquote new barrel right here. You can see that this is contoured and tapered. Um, I'm not going to comment as to who made this barrel because they did a pretty bad job right there. You can see the uh, the taper and the full-length contour don't actually meet up. So when they rechuck, when they flipped this around and rechucked it, something went wrong. But that's okay. Again, this is going to be 22 long rifle, 22 short. 22 long, whatever you want to call it, right? This is a 30 caliber rifled barrel. It is unchambered, but it is rifled. So, you'll also notice that there is a distinct difference back here, right? So that is the main point of what I want to talk about today. So that's why I've got this handy dandy little cheat sheet. Also, the other thing too, here is the barrel liner. Right there. This is a 22 caliber rifle barrel liner. It is unchambered, but it is rifled. So, moving on here. So the barrel liner measures out at an OD 0.305 inches, right? That's no big deal. Uh, this barrel, since it is technically 30 caliber, it measures out anywhere between 310 to 2.96 depending on which part 
of the bore you actually measure it out at, right? So that's no big deal. All we got to do is get a aircraft extension drill, drill it halfway, flip it, drill it the other way. We're fine, right? So this is where things get screwy. So the chamber end diameter on the old barrel is 0 0.920 inches, right? That is this part. On the new barrel, same spot right here, this measures out at 0.9455. However, the threads on the chamber end of the new barrel are screw cut threads. And if you see, I don't know how many of you guys know anything about machining and stuff like that, but you can see they're distinct triangular shaped threads, right? Those are screw threads. Whereas on the old barrel, uh, by the way, I misspoke in the last video. These aren't buttress threads. These are 10 degree square cut threads. Hard to see. There you go. So you can see what the paper behind there. Those are completely square cut. They're not Acme. They're square cut. They've got a 10 degree relief on them as best as I can measure. And according to uh, the Machinist Bible, which is... this. If you don't have one, go. Moving on. So the the barrel thread major diameter on the new barrel is 1.056 inches, right? Now the major diameter on the old barrel over those square threads is 0.976 inches. And then our shank depth to shoulder, which is basically our chamber face to the shoulder that this barrel times on, on the old barrel is 1.427 inches. On the new barrel, it's 1.537 inches, right? So the new barrel has 13 threads per inch on this screw pattern thread. The old barrel, as best as I can measure, because square threads are really old and not a whole lot of people use them, and I don't have the correct tools to really quantify them correctly, but best I can tell that there's 12 threads per inch of this old 10 degree square cut thread. Now, in order to get the about 12 threads per inch on my lathe, that means that I would need stud gear 32 and thread gear 48. So 32 teeth per uh, thread, or 32 teeth on the stud gear and 48 teeth on the thread gear, right? I don't have that. So that kind of leaves us with a, a little bit of a conundrum, right? So what we could do is convert the old receiver over to the 13 threads per inch on the new barrel, right? But if you look down in there, there is not a whole lot of material left on there, right? So that means that we would have to cut out a lot of that material and rethread it. The other idea is we can chuck this in the lathe, we can bore this out, cut this end off. Since we already know that this piece times into the receiver correctly, we can cut this piece off turn this diameter all the way down, all the way, all the way basically flat, and then put this end over it as a sleeve. That way we can mate the new barrel into the old receiver. All right, and I think that is going to be the best way to go because, again, this is going to be 22 long rifle. It's going to be sleeved. It is in a what I would consider pretty overkill barrel for 22. I mean, if you look at how much material is there, that's a lot, right? So I think that it would be perfectly fine to completely turn this down to a diameter where this can slip over and be either epoxied, welded, brazed onto it, and then use this for our head spacing and our fixturing point into the receiver, right? So, that's going to be the plan for now. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's not, right? It's, it's literally just making this smaller and then making this fit over it. Once this fits over it, we cut it off, stick it on there. That's it. No big deal. And then, what that also means is that we won't have to recut the extractor groove right there. We won't have to recut this radius right here, right there, for the block to clear. Because as you can see, this block has that nice radius in it. 
So once it once the block comes up, right? It's up against the chamber face, fire. Pull it down. And look at that. There is that nice radius already put in there for us. And then this is the groove for the extractor to get pulled out. So I think that this is going to be, out of every option that we have right now, this is going to be the best move. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna try. So that'll be in part three. Again, I gotta film this kind of weird because this is forbidden knowledge, I guess, but that's the way that this is gonna go. Also, once we go over to the lathe, we're gonna turn, instead of trying to build up the material on these these holes and these holes and on the on the hammer and on the block, we're just gonna turn some new pins out of uh, probably stainless steel. Turn new pins and just be done with it, right? Easy, no big deal. So that's the way that part three is gonna go, but this is just a little bit of update to show you where this is headed. So keep that in mind. And thanks for watching and happy building.